Good evening ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tonight I'm going to be um, participating in a lecture in uh, Swithamley, which is in uh, North Staffordshire, and it's concerning the Leek of Frith Horde, uh, which is the Iron Age Gold Talk Horde, found in late 2016 by Mark Hambleton and Joe Kania. Uh, so, very brief introduction for you here, and uh, from then on we'll be obviously at the event tonight and letting you see what the archaeologists and such like have to say. So, uh, hope you're all well and have a good evening. I will run, I will climb, I will soar I'm undefeated, oh Jumping out of my skin, pull the cord Yeah, I believe it Chase the sun, find the beautiful We will go in the dark, tiny dice to go And we'll dream impossible Possible ah. And we'll dream impossible I will chase, I will reach, I will fly Until I'm breaking, until I'm breaking Out my cage like a bird in the night I know I'm changing, I know I'm changing it Into something big, better than before And if it takes, takes a thousand lives Then it's worth fighting for not until you fall that you fly When your dreams come alive, you're unstoppable Take a shot, chase the sun, find the beautiful We will go in the dark, tiny dice to go And we'll dream impossible Hi everyone, uh, Dave Sadler here and this we have tonight is Mark Hamilton. Uh, Mark Hamilton was one of the people who actually discovered the Leek Frith Talk Hoard, Gold Talk Hoard. Uh, we've been along to the, the, uh, the talk tonight and, and basically I just wanted to have a brief chat with him and introduce to the readers. So, uh, briefly, yeah. tell us about the hook. Yeah, briefly, well, yeah, I, like I say, just done the talk tonight and uh, it was just totally out of the blue one Sunday morning. Um, you know, as you do, you get up, go out. On this particular morning, I had to force myself to have to go. Um, and just, we've been on this land over the years, 20 years ago, 25, 30 years ago, and um, only started up again really in 2012. Uh, kitted ourselves up with some new kit, obviously, because the detector technology has changed over the years as well. And um, decided to re ask permissions again, you know, what we've been for in the past. Managed to get on this particular land. And uh, you know, the rest is kind of like history, really. You know, we yeah. have to stumble. History is the magic word. History is the magic word, really. Yeah, you know, stumbled on it on a Sunday morning kind yeah. of thing. So yeah, really, highly delighted. So, uh, what machine were you using at the time? Uh, well, I did a bit of research. Yeah, um, I was quite like the uh, Adventus XP Adventus. So I kind of like kitted myself out with that first. It was more like a mid-range machine. I thought it'd, you know, to do, um, to do quite a bit, you know, all rounder basically. And what was Joe using? Uh, he got his old Rado still, his old Rado 120 b <laughs> uh, but he didn't want to get kitted up again obviously because yeah. he wanted to see obviously if we liked him, we got back into it properly. Because I sold up, I got no detectors at all, so I sold up um, all together I had. And uh, yeah, I took the plunge, got one from Bregton, because uh, I always had my detectors from Bregton. Um, and then um, 
you know, went out, started going out again on the on permission, started asking permission again. And um, to be quite honest with you, I was really, really impressed with the Adventists. You know, I still am. I still am impressed with it. I've, uh, I've upgraded now to Dave's, like everybody else seems to have one now, you know what I mean, because it is a lighter machine. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and it does tell you a little bit more feedback of what's in the ground and that. But for the Adventists, uh, for depth, depth-wise, even though these weren't found at a great depth, you know, uh, I was picking stuff up quite deep, you know, eight, nine, ten inches, eleven inches deep uh, on coins and, uh, you know, even small bits of metal. So, to me, uh, I'd invested wildly in that, you know, when I first uh, obviously got kitted up and, and come back and, into the office. And Joe was using that, his original machine when he found He was used, no, what he did was, because we got back into it again, and he thought, yeah, I need to, you know, obviously upgrade myself now. He ended up getting an event the same as me. He didn't want really. He doesn't really get involved with the uh, the research and, and detectors, and doesn't really, you know, understand the how they work, etc. He just wants to turn on and go away. You go, and that's it. Mm. Uh, you know, no nonsense, no meter, nothing. That's the reason why I bought the event also because no meter. It was just turn on, turn on and go. Um, you know, nothing fancy basically. Even though what it is now, uh, uh, and so yeah, he, he ended up getting an event and. That's what he found the first talk with was with the Adventist. Mm. Uh, but like I say, I think you'd have found it with any detector, really, yeah. because you're only six, six inches down, probably, if that, you know, six to six, seven inches up down, that's all we do. So, yeah, uh, like I say, bolt out of the blue area. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, your, rea- your immediate reaction upon Joe coming down the field and showing you what Well, like I said, you know, it's, it's one of them moments that you, you kind of, like, dream of. Um, you don't think it's ever going to happen to you. It's like you're the person with a lot of tickets into You don't think it's going to happen to you. Um, like I say, he didn't really know what it was at first. He'd seen him in books, he'd seen pictures, but he didn't know what it was. And as soon as he dangled it in front of me, you know, uh, that was it. I just fell to pieces. I just fell apart. Sorry. It's all right. I just fell apart. It was um, because I kind of like knew what it was, you know. And he, he, we didn't really know if it was gold because it was a few little scratches on it. It looked like a bit of brass underneath, brassy, brassy coloured underneath. So we weren't 100% sure if it was proper gold. You know, was it gold plated? Was it, you know, to me just coated mm-hmm. or what? We didn't really know. But I kind of like knew at the back of my mind, and then obviously you know, um, once again we went up and scoured the area and found the other, the other four, yeah, three pieces. Marvelous. Yeah. So you know. And you've had an abundance of archaeologically archaeological input thereafter. Yes. Yeah. But uh, like I say, we've got on really well with the archaeology archaeology establishment. Uh, you know, particularly the Stoke, the Stoke Museum. Uh, we've got on really well with them. They've you know they've really helped us out. They guided as they did through the whole process. They did actually fast track it as well, mm. which is good. You know, because a lot of these. Uh, treasury inquest can go on for, for years and they kind of wanted to fast track this one so it was all done and dusted you know, um, at the coroner's inquest in the space of three or four months mm-hmm. so you know, it was really good from that point of view as yeah, well we yeah. kept hanging on and of course it went to the valuation committee uh, in London and that was, uh, that was in July time, August time when they meet, because they only meet on certain times of the yeah, year yeah. and also of course when they, you know, everything got valued then so yeah, it was really a fast process we thought brilliant mm-hmm. So, still happy? Yeah. Still more, detecting? Yeah, still detecting, yeah. You, you, you can't beat the hobby. No. We just look at it as a stroll out on a Sunday morning, uh, fresh air, lovely views, especially around here in the mornings, you know, and a uh, little bit of digging, cracking exercise. Better than golf, where that oh, uh, spoils a walk. I'd have, thought, <laughs> I'd have thought so, yeah. It just spoils a good walk, don't it, golf, yeah. so they say. But, yeah, um, if you find anything, it's a bonus, yeah. no matter what you find. We, yeah, find, we find absolutely zilch since... Nothing at all. Uh, we went on a rally the other week, and Joe found this is just the biggest weekend a half cut hammered, mm. and that's the only bit we've had for two years plus. Brilliant. So, but we're still obviously you know well into the yeah. So you know I think once we once you set your standard poly too high, <laughs> if you see what I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah, You've got yeah, a lot yeah. to live up to, aren't you? But hey, I'm, I'm still not I'm still lucky to find musket balls. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still like finding musket balls to be quite honest with you. You know what I mean? Them. Anything I just find, yeah. find anything at all. Anyway, what um, I've, I've spoke to to Mark tonight, and uh, hopefully Mark's going to be coming on the old Metal Mode UK podcast in uh, the coming months. Right. I can't get this right. Though. Let's try that one. <laughs> I'm no good with this. You're right. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much, Mark. It's, it's okay, Dave. No problem at all. Nice to meet you. Fantastic. Thank you, yourself. Yeah. Thank you, mate. So uh, obviously, you know, we're going to put something together on the Archaeology yeah, Metal Detection touch. website. Keep in touch, definitely. And also the YouTube channel. So. Yeah. Uh, if anything you find, even if it's the slightest thing, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. we're more than happy to publish readers' findings and such like. So no problem, again, mate. thank you very much. No problem, mate. Thank Take you. Care. Cheers.